Oh my. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go tell everybody that we're streaming. So let's go post this on the G3 Discord. Because we have patch notes. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to have a voice by the end of tonight. <clears throat> it's just not going to happen. I don't think. Patch notes are live. We are reading and overreacting to them together as a community of readers and overreactors. <laughs> <laughs> bring your memes and let's check out the patch notes what are what are you doing for the next two and a half hours well what i'm doing is reading patch notes all right so we've we've now sent out the general alert to everyone whoops did we did we send out the general alert at everyone. There we go. I don't know if that dinged everyone. If that didn't ding you, I'm so sorry. Believe it or not, there are actually people on our Discord that ask me to make sure that I ping them when we go live, and sometimes I forget to do it. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3.9 patch notes reading. <sighs> Yeah, there's much rejoicing. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> I want to get this first off. I want to get this all so that way I can actually read this throughout the night. There we go. Is that a little bit larger for me? I have really bad eyes. Some of you know this. Some of you some of you have told me I have a really bad voice, but trust me, my 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 eyes are even worse than my voice. That's just how bad it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's the way how it is. Let's let's move this over just a little bit. Oh, move this one over too. Can I move it? Nope. Yes. See, these are all the benefits of going live with G3 Iron. You get to see all of this uh, raw footage of me screwing around with uh, OBS. <laughs> uh, let's not capture the uh, the bottom scroll. Let's. There we go. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Content update. 3.9.0 Path of Exile Conquerors of the Atlas. Wow. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be a lot. So those of you who are new here, if you've never seen me do this, uh, one of the first things that I actually go in and do is I actually go and compare uh, the word count of the present, uh, the present patch notes with old patch notes so bear with me for a moment where I find some of my old patch notes and uh, where is it patch notes patch notes patch notes is it is it not on this account which account is it so one of the things that I like to do is go in and find exactly how long the patch notes are for word count um, so that way you've actually got like a sense of comparison when GGG says, hey, this is the biggest patch of all time, or hey, this, there's more stuff involved in this patch than ever before. It's just nice um, from a word count perspective to say, hey, how much are we going to be reading through tonight? Uh, but then also to see exactly how much um, communication has changed and shifted at Grinding Gear Games over the years to see the number of things that they are communicating about um, as well as just the expansion the, the seriously the, the the level of ambition um, in the expansions that get released it, it's really really cool to see so for instance this is the 3.8 patch notes um, and the word count uh, was 13,000 for 3.8 uh, and so what happens when I select all of... Did I select... Uh, no, I just grabbed everything from the Challenge League and below. Okay, so we're going to select everything below. Where I'm not even looking at the titles of anything right here because I don't want to like I don't want to have any, like, uh, what you call it, spoilers. Okay, so go all the way down to the bottom. So this is our word count for... Doo -doo 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 -doo, patch note 3.9. Go back up to the top. There we go. And uh, we're going to paste this, and it takes my computer usually a minute or two to paste this, this amount of text. But we'll see if it does it pretty decently. Yeah, 
did that pretty decently. Okay, 20 pages is what this just pulled. So this is 3.9 patch notes. 3.9 patch notes. Metamorph League. Don't worry, we're not going to read it on this format. I will read it off of the official forum uh, thread, those of you who are already wondering. But again, we're doing this just so that way we can get a word count. Okay, so the word count for Metamorph League is actually way, way smaller than Blight League. Look at that. Almost half. Not quite. Not quite half. Much, much smaller. So then a, a question right from the get-go? Right from the get-go. Yes, Control-A would grab all of the comments as well, so that's why I don't do it. Um, right from the get-go, I wonder if... Because I, I think Natalia posted these. I believe that's who posted the 3.9 patch notes. Let's check. 3.9. Yeah, this is posted by Natalia. Okay. So I wonder if I wonder if patch note length just matters based on the community management personnel that GGG has working on actually building this post. That that would actually be interesting. That would be interesting to see. Anyway, okay. Enough enough dilly dallying. So that just gives us a point of reference. Thirteen thousand words on three point eight patch notes and uh, eight thousand three hundred and forty. Uh, then typically what I do is I do go over onto Reddit and I do post this. Just so that way other people can see it. Where are the patch notes? Where, where are patch notes? Patch notes? Go to, go to top in like the last hour. It should be right there, right? Patch notes right here. Okay. So we're going to post this just as a point of reference. I always do this every league. 3.8 blight was... Do, 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 30 pages. Do, 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 do. And 3.9 metamorph is it, it's just a lot smaller it's just in terms of the amount of info that they're giving us okay all right i've got i've gotten my little idiosyncrasies out of the way we can close all those windows and we can just dive into all of the various things that are going to get nerfed that are going to get buffed that are going to get balanced that are going to get changed okay so starting off with the metamorph challenge league there we go can we actually see that we can the Challenge Leagues are a great opportunity for a fresh start in a new economy. All of your old characters and items are still present in the standard and hardcore leagues, but you're encouraged to join the new leagues, complete challenges, and demonstrate your mastery of Path of Exile. In the Metamorph Challenge League, fellow exile Tane Octavius is... Is it Tane or Tane? How do you pronounce that A? I actually... I'm going to do this. Let's see what Google Voice does. Or let's see what auto uh, uh, text-to-speech does with this name. Let's see. Okay, text-to-speech. Tane Octavius. Tane Octavius. You tell me, chat, how you guys pronounce it. That's, that's what text-to-speech is telling me how to pronounce it. Tane Octavius is investigating the sources of ill intent in the world, what he calls the intrinsic, oh, quote, the intrinsic darkness. Help him by harvesting flesh samples from monsters throughout Rayclast and combining them to summon powerful, transforming bosses, metamorphs. The more difficult the encounter you create, the greater the rewards. A new type of currency, the Catalyst, is available only by creating and defeating these powerful new foes. Catalysts can be used to increase the quality of your rings, belts, and amulets in specific ways, enhancing certain types of modifiers. Okay, that's very cool. We've already been previewed most of this stuff. So if this stuff doesn't sound new to you, it's because it's not. If this does, if this stuff does sound new to you, cool. Welcome to the channel. We're so glad that you're here. And if you haven't been paying attention over the last couple of weeks, again, this is Metamorph League. Uh, oh, what what else am I missing? Introductory. I have a bald head. Like and subscribe. Anything else that I'm missing? There's no timestamps because this is a live stream. So if you're trying to jump forward to the part where we just tell you how big Ark is getting buffed and other things are getting nerfed. Sorry, we don't have timestamps for that yet. Alright, so, uh, what else? Once you reach maps, you'll be able to acquire samples from map bosses in different areas and combine them in Tane's lab for fights that are extra difficult but extra rewarding. With 3.90, there are standard hardcore and solo cell-found variations of the Metamorph Challenge League available. They have the same core mechanics and items. You can create private league versions of these same leagues with mods that make the game harder. 
small note here. I have said in the past that I'm interested in doing private leagues. I am not going to be partaking in the uh, Awakener Hardcore Solo Southbound race. I'm not a Solo Southbound racer. So those of you out there who have asked me that question before, uh, hey, Iron, are you going to be partaking in the Awakener race event? No, you are vastly overrating uh, my gameplay ability. Just because I am capable of... Uh, uh, using my experience in the gaming industry to read notes and translate what that means to you uh, doesn't mean that I'm good at this game. <laughs> Mechanically, I'm terrible. I can theory craft the game, but when it comes to actually clicking buttons, I'm really good at misclicking things uh, and not so good at actually clicking on things. If you talk to anybody on Discord who's played League of Legends with me, they can they can tell you about how terrible my micro is. Okay, the new challenge league includes a set of 40 new challenges. When you complete 12 challenges, you will receive the Metamorph Footprints effect. When you reach 24 challenges, you will receive the Metamorph Weapon effect. At 36 challenges, you will receive the Metamorph Portal effect. I think the Portal effect looks really, really cool, to be honest. Okay, from uh, the 19th challenge onwards, and for every third challenge after that, you will receive a piece of the Metamorph Totem Pole decoration to display in your hideout. The totem pole permanently showcases how many of the metamorph challenges you completed during the league. Alright. Major new content and features from the Conquerors of the Atlas. A brand new endgame experience has been added. Brand new mapping endgame. The Shaper and the Elder have both been defeated. Just not by you. Another group of exiles has saved Rayclast from the Celestial Harbingers of Doom, but that wasn't enough. They continued to cut paths through the Atlas, leaving Carnage in their wake and forcing Zana to seal them in the, end, uh, in the Atlas forever. But they are trying to find a way out. Oh, you pesky little exiles, huh? Can you stop them before they bring ruin to Oriath? Featuring five new endgame boss encounters, powerful rewards including new currencies, and new ways to modify your atlas. Added a new dexterity skill gem, Artillery Ballista. We've added another new dexterity skill gem, Shrapnel Ballista. Added a third new dexterity skill gem, Ensnaring Arrow. And added a fourth new dexterity uh, skill gem. Oh, sorry. Added a first new dexterity support gem, Greater Volley Support. Added a new dexterity support gem, Aero Nova support. Added a new dexterity support gem, Barrage support. Added new currencies. They are called <clears throat> the Crusaders Exalted Orb, the Hunters Exalted Orb, the Redeemers Exalted Orb, and the Warlords Exalted Orb. Just FYI, out of these, where is it? Five new boss encounters? Where do they say it? Up here featuring five new boss endgame boss encounters? My guess is, is these guys are going to be called, where is it? Where is it? I just missed it. The Crusader, the Hunter, the Redeemer, and the Warlord. Right? That would be, or at least those are the influence types that are affiliated with them, something like that. And then the big bad guy that, you know, after you kill all these guys, you summon them together, that would be the Awakener. Okay. We've added new currency, the Orb of Awakening. This item can be used on any item with influence, such as Shaper Influenced Rings, and then any item of the same type, a ring in this case, to transfer that influence to the new item. The original item will be destroyed as a result of this process, but some of the original item's mods may be carried over to the destination item. An item can have two influence types attached to it if they are transferred in this way. Okay, since so many people were upset with me reacting emotionally and excited the other day from Del Development Manifesto, I'm going to reserve my emotion and simply look at this and in a cold, calm, calculating approach, I'm going to say this is a mini return of the synthesis, synthesizing style of crafting. This is a mini form of it. This is going to allow you to take some of the mods from influenced stuff and put them on another item, same base type. That sounds an awful lot like the synthesizer, but I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy on the internet. I'm just like you. Unless, of course, you're not a guy on the internet. You're something else on the internet. In which case, we probably still have a lot more in common than we don't. All right. Added 16 new unique items. Added 35 awakened support gems, which are more powerful versions of existing support gems. These gems are only available from the Conquerors of the Atlas content.
I'm going to go through so much water tonight. <coughs> I feel bad for my water supply. I'm just going to run out of water today. Added 14 new divination cards designed by our supporters. Okay, minor new content and features. You can now add item filters to your account through the Path of Exile website. Hey, that's cool. When you then log into your game client, no matter where you are logging in from, you will then have access to all of the item filters tied to your account, even if you're playing on a console. Hey, console boys! Console boys, where are you? Shout out to all the console boys that are out there playing Path of Exile either on Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, I know there are many of you out there, simply because a lot of you will drop me questions. I, I've never played PoE on a console. If I still owned my PlayStation 4, I would undoubtedly be playing uh, be playing Path of Exile on it. I no longer do. Nonetheless, uh, there's some quality of life for those of you who play on console. Lion Eyes Watch has been visually updated and uses our latest rendering technology. I'm really looking forward to that because that latest rendering technology is what we're going to see PoE 2 uh, looking like and feeling like. So when we first come into Lion Eyes Watch for the very first time uh, here in 3.9, that same style of and level of visual graphic display that we see in Lion Eyes Watch is what we're going to see all the way through uh, Path of Exile 2 and even more. So I'm very excited for for everyone that was excited for the announcement of PoE 2 and wondering if, if now was the time when maybe visually was a good time to come into Path of Exile because maybe aesthetically or even just graphically it didn't look that great up until that time and maybe that was the turnoff uh, for people to, to stop them from enjoying Path of Exile. Well, it's really, really cool because we don't have to wait until PoE 2 for all of those visual updates to come out. So I'm really glad that that's coming out now. And it's going to be in the first town, which means a lot of new players are going to get to see that. There's a new loading screen as you enter, enter Lion Eyes Watch to match the town's new look. Okay, so some of us will probably miss that old one just for nostalgia's sake. Um, added a new vendor recipe for your spare catalysts. You can now refund multi-choice passives, such as those on the Ascendant, to reselect your choice without having to refund all the passives after them as well. Okay, cool. Added 3D art for uh, torch, torch Oak Step in Mashin Emits. Very cool. Ranged attack totems are now called Ballistas. Yep. A lot of ranged attack skills have received major visual improvements, including the basic wand and bow attacks, burning arrow, barrage, and puncture. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Arrows that collide with terrain now have a chance of bouncing off. This doesn't do anything other than look really cool and help performance in situations where players are firing thousands of arrows. This brings up a question, and I think I want to do this at some point in our uh, featured weekly build guide series, uh, where we just feature off different builds. I think I want to try to make a build just to see how many max projectiles I can make. Not to actually make it like clear the game or kill stuff. I just want to see what's the most number of projectiles that I could possibly make uh, on a character in Theorycraft with that. But anyway, that's for another video. Other skills have also received visual improvements, including Firestorm, Frost Blink, Freezing Pulse, Heavy Strike, Magma Orb, Summon Skeletons. Summon Skeletons has visual improvements? Summon Skeletons weren't mentioned getting nerfed in the manifesto. I wonder if they got nerfed today. We'll have to see. All the Warcry skills, Lightning Tendrils, Flesh Offering, Arc, and Sunder. Added Labyrinth Enchantments for new skills, as well as for Burning Arrow and Explosive Arrow. Oh. Okay. Sorry, having my first emotional uh, emotional moment of the day. Those of you who would, would prefer your streamers and your, your, your Path of Exile content to come in cold, calculated, unemotional style, I, I, I'm so sorry for that moment of emotion and human. But I just look at that and I go, there's already over 500 lab enchants we've got. This just makes lab, you know, farming the lab tougher. It, artificially, it's, it's literally just through mechanic creep and stuff being added to the game. And nothing getting removed to to keep any kind of balance for uh, actually farming helm enchants. I feel bad for anybody in Solo Self Found that actually tries to farm lab enchants. That's ugh. the cosmetics filter will now also check the description of your cosmetics rather than just the name. Improve the shadows double dagger dual strike animation. Oh, cool. Uh, continue to incrementally improve the sound, art, effects, and environments. All right, Atlas changes. The Atlas of Worlds has been reworked. You now start at the center and will work your way outwards as you explore a new storyline. 
Interesting. The Shaper and Elder storyline is gone and has been replaced by a story that takes place in the aftermath of the old story. Added five new difficult endgame bosses, each with their own special loot, including several new item types. What? Added five new endgame bosses, each with their own special loot, including several new item types. That's just referencing... That's that's just referencing like the influence types, right? These aren't new base items, right? Chat, help me out here. Am I just going insane? Am I going insane? That's what that says, right? It says several new item types. That 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 that's just got that's got to be a reference to like the influence and stuff. The 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 various influence that's going to be added through the new exalted orbs. Added a new mechanic. Watchstones. These can only be obtained by defeating one of the new Atlas bosses. They can be used to raise the tier of all maps in a particular region of the Atlas, causing all maps of these base types to drop at the new higher tier. Cool. Sextants can no longer be applied to individual maps and no longer have a radius. They are now applied to watchstones instead and affect every map in that watchstones region. They are not restricted by map tier, and if two or more watchstones contain the same sextant modifier, only one of them will apply. Also, they've been renamed. Zana can now sell Shaper and Elder-influenced maps once you have progressed through your Atlas enough. These act like the old Atlas influence, creating new monsters, threats, and rewards. The Zana modifiers that change map tiers or reroll map base types have been disabled, at least for now. Unique maps can now drop with varied tiers based on the state of your atlas. Maps that previously had monster level overrides such as hollowed ground now instead rely on the variable tier. All right, blight mechanics added to the core of the game. Blight has been added to the core game. You have a 10% chance to encounter Cassia and her beautiful singing while exploring the atlas. Each blight encounter will award at least one oil or blighted map. Cassia will say some nonsense early on because we haven't updated her script yet. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. That's going to be funny. Q, this, this line right here, Q angry Reddit thread. Why is Cassia spamming the same voice line over and over again? That's funny. All right, character balance. Fortify's damage reduction effect is now multiplicative with other similar effects. Shock and chill calculations have been changed. In general, it's much easier to shock and chill monsters with low values of the ailment, but harder to reach high values of shock and chill. The formula used to calculate shock and chill magnitudes is now one half times damage percent of ailment threshold. See below. Ugh. Okay. We've added an ailment threshold to monsters. Did they rename it? In the great majority of cases, the ailment threshold matches the monster's maximum life. It primarily differs for especially high-life monsters such as the Shaper, where the threshold is reduced to, the, to allow ailments to be applied with hits that wouldn't ordinarily reach the required life thresholds. The minimum shock and chill value is now 5%, which is up from 1%. To reach the minimum, you must deal 0.4% of a monster's ailment threshold with the associated ailment element in a single hit. To inflict a 10% chill, you must deal 1.8% of a monster's ailment threshold with the associated ailment in a single hit. A 30% chill requires a hit of 28% of the monster's ailment threshold. The default shock magnitude for effects that apply shock without damage, such as Skitterbots, is now 15, which is down from 20%. Okay, so Skitterbots got a little bit of a nerf, but Skitterbots are still fantastic. Don't let anybody tell you Skitterbots aren't great. Skitterbots are really good. The alternate uh, the alternate alternate ailment saps. Oh my gosh, I cannot speak. The alternate ailments sap, scorch, and brittle have a slightly different calculation as they have lower caps on their magnitudes. Skill reworks. All right, shrapnel shot now called galvanic arrow. It now fires two additional arrows at all levels. The arrows now degrade in flight, eventually vanishing. This limits the skill's base range. Modifiers to projectile speed will allow the arrows to travel farther before they vanish. Still deals a burst of damage in a cone. Increases and in reductions to arrow speed also apply to this skill areas of effect. So increases to projectile speed will cause your cone to also reach farther. Now gains added lightning damage as the gem levels up up 9 to 179 at gem level 20. Interesting. 
now gains 1% increased projectile speed per 1% gem quality from 1% increased area of effect per 2% gem quality. Arrows no longer pierce by default. Interesting. Explosive arrow. Now costs 8 mana at gem level 1 from 18 up to 10 at gem level 20, which is down from 27. Arrows stick into the enemy or wall and explode after a duration. The, du the duration no longer refreshes whenever a new arrow is attached. That's good. Previously, they were handled like charges, which refresh their duration whenever a new one is, is gained. If an enemy has multiple arrows stuck in them, the first one to explode will consume all the other attached arrows. That's why I just said it's good, because you can trigger them all. Adding their damage to the first arrow's explosion. On hit effects such as chance to ignite or critical strikes are determined by the exploding arrow. However, each arrow's damage is calculated with their independent critical strike chance taken into account. For example, if the exploding arrow did not successfully roll a critical strike or ignite, the explosion will not ignite. If two other arrows were also attached at the point of the explosion and they successfully rolled to critically strike, they will add their critical strike damage to the explosion, but it will not cause an ignite or trigger any other on critical strike effects. Okay, that makes sense. Explosions now deal 50% of base damage. Previously, weapon damage was not taken into account. All right. So if you scale up a really good bow, explosive arrow is going to be good. Explosions now also deal added fire damage based on gem level up to 522 to 783 at gem level 20, which is uh, down from 586 to 879. Now inherits its base critical strike chance from your weapon. Previously, it just had a 6% base critical strike chance. Now gains plus 2 to explosion radius up to a cap determined by gem level up to 19 at gem level 20. Previously, it naturally capped at 10 due to the charge limit. Explosions now deal 3% more damage with Ignite per explosive arrow on the target. Is there a limit on that? Some of you may want to play Explosive Arrow. I'm just going to throw that out there. Is there a limit on that? <laughs> that looks pretty fun. Skill balance. All Ballista Totem skills such as Siege Ballista and Ranged Attack Totem, which has been renamed Ballista Totem, now place the totem at melee range. Specific skills. Alright boys, here we go. The range at which Arc can chain to another enemy is now 35 units, up from 35. Ah, <sighs> the Arc meta is back. So many people complained when Ark got nerfed in terms of its range and its chaining that the quality on of the quality of life on Ark is what really got hit, not the damage. The damage you can always scale damage in Path of Exile, but the quality of life and the range on Ark getting nerfed the way that it got nerfed. This is now this is now quite significant for the quality of life on Ark. So for those of you who are new players, if you've ever wanted to play Ark. Go take a look at at Enki's Arc uh, Arc Witch Guide, uh, Arc Elementalist Witch. It's it's a really good guide. It's really well written. It's probably the single best written guide in all of Path of Exile, and if not best written, it's certainly top five, and certainly top five in terms of popularity I've ever read. All right, Blast Rain now deals thirty five percent of base damage at gem level one from forty percent up to thirty six percent at gem level twenty from forty eight. Okay. Sources of additional projectiles now add additional explosions. That's really good. Now has five additional projectiles at all levels, up from four. Okay, so a little bit of a hit, a little bit of a hit on the base, but it's getting more projectiles, and you can scale up way more projectiles. So, yeah. All right, Burning Arrow. Now converts 100% of physical damage to fire, which used to be 50. Now has 50% chance to ignite enemies at all gem levels, previously 30% at gem level 1, up to 49% at gem level 20. Now deals 50% more damage with ignite at gem level 1 from 30%, up to 88% at gem level 20 from 68%. Now applies an additional debuff when you ignite, dealing extra burning damage based on the magnitude of the ignite. Now gains 1% to fire damage over time multiplier per 2% gem quality from 3% increase ignite. Hmm. 
that's just a change. It's mostly a change in the wording. But that is interesting that the fire damage over time, so it's not just the ignite damage, it'll also be the burning damage that's affected by this. So that's interesting. Because it now applies an additional debuff when you ignite, dealing extra burning damage based on the magnitude of the ignite, which will also proc this. So burning arrow seems like that. That could be a pretty decent option. Caustic Arrow now deals 8.8 .8 base chaos damage per second at gem level 1, which is up from 7, up to 1927 at gem level 20, which is up from 1714. Now gains additional radius as the gem levels, up to plus 6 at gem level 20, which used to be only plus 3. That's a pretty big buff for Caustic Arrow. I would not be shocked to see a bunch of Caustic Arrow builds coming out. Discharge no longer has a target limit. It previously, it previously limited to 30 targets. Today I learned that, <laughs> that Discharge had a limit to targets. Did not know that. Elemental Hit. Now deals 22 to 40 added fire damage at gem level 1, which is a slight nerf. Uh, up to 480 to 891 at gem level 20, which is also another slight nerf on the fire damage. So is Elemental Hit... Are they just rotating us off of the Elemental Hit uh, delve builds? Maybe. Maybe. Now deals 18 to 33 added cold damage at gem level 1, uh, which is down from 19 to 35, up to 392 to 729 at gem level 20, which is down from 483 to 896. Now deals 4 to 67 added lightning damage at gem level 1, which is down at the top end, and then up to 77 to 1465 at gem level 20, uh, from 95 to 1802. Okay, so elemental hit just across the board. It got its damage touched. Just across the board, it all got got touched going down uh freezing pulse the art now uh more accurately reflects the rate at which the damage dealt by projectiles is reduced okay cool ice shot no longer leaves chilled ground on impact now deals 130 percent of base damage at gem level one from 120 percent up to 174 percent at gem level 20 from 147 percent now chills enemies as though dealing 100% more damage at gem level 1, up to 195% at gem level 20. Now gains increased effect of chill as the gem levels, up to 19% at gem level 20. Okay, so Ice Shot scales a little bit better with its gem levels. But this is also a pretty significant uh, mechanical change. So, that's interesting. Icicle Mine. All of you that wanted to play Icicle Miners... Here's some news for you. All right, Icicle Mine was providing enormous area coverage and damage at very little cost, and was also causing performance problems. You don't say. These changes are intended to bring Icicle Mine in line with other mines, as well as alleviate the performance issues it was causing. The projectiles now fade over time, similar to Freezing Pulse, but without the gradual damage drop-off. In other words, the mines will have shorter range by default, but can be increased by increasing the skill's projectile speed. Okay, cool. Uh, now has four additional projectiles at all levels, which is down from six. Wow. Now gains 1% increased projectile speed per 1% gem quality, from 1% increased projectile damage per 1% gem... Yeah, that's a pre... I don't know. Those of you who have played Icicle Mines, let me know what you think. I have not played an Icicle Miner, so I don't know. Reading that, just even swapping off the, the quality, like going from quality projectile speed versus damage. Granted, it's not that much damage, right? It's only a 20% increase, but that's st it's still damage, right? It's still damage that you're losing, so it doesn't quite feel as strong. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's nerfed to the ground. Just means it's different. All right. Lansing Steel. Now has a base attack time multiplier of 85%, up from 80. Now deals 135% of base damage at gem level 1, up from 130, up to 180% at gem level 20, which is up from 175. Now grants 1% increased impale effect per 1% gem quality from 1% chance to impale per 2% gem quality. Ooh. That makes me excited. Lansing Steel, huh? Eh? 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 Lightning Arrow. Now deals 110% of base damage at gem level 1, uh, up from 100%, up to 134% at gem level 20, up from 119. That's that's a pretty significant buff. 
now shocks enemies as though dealing 100% more damage at gem level 1, up to 195% at gem level 20. Now gains increased effective shock as the gem levels up to 29% at gem level 20. Wow! Now gains 1% chance to shock and 0.5% increased effective shock per 1% gem quality. That's really good. Alright. Somebody go pull up a lightning arrow build. That looks hot. Oh, that looks hot. Yep. Lightning Spire Trap. Now deals 12 to 26 lightning damage at gem level 1, which is down from 14 to 43. That's a huge nerf. They cut it in half from the top side. Up to 166 to 497 at gem level 20, uh, which is still a significant nerf. Now strikes every 0 0.55 seconds at gem level 1, up to 0 0.3. 36 seconds at gem level 20 from 0 0.3 seconds at all gem levels. Yeah, Lightning Spire Trap, that is a serious nerf. That was a great bossing skill. That's a bummer. Lightning Warp. If you now cast multiple Lightning Warps rapidly, you will travel between all of them as they trigger the warp. The timing for each subsequent warp is based on the distance from the previous warp. <laughs> okay, so somebody needs to make a build. Do you guys know uh, those, uh, those slinkies? The metal, the metal springs that you can send down the stairs, right? The slinkies. Somebody needs to make a lightning warp slinky build that just like boop, 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 boop. That <laughs> just like pops. That just pops across ray class. It does zero damage. You know, just scale all the damage mitigation in the world. But scale cooldown and cast speed and just have this little lightning warp guy popping across ray class. Molten Strike now deals 120% of base damage at gem level 1, up to 139 at gem level 20 uh, from 130. Okay, so they said Molten Strike was getting a buff. What was it at gem level 1? Somebody look that up for me in chat, if you wouldn't mind. Now deals 120% of base damage at gem level 1, up to 139 at gem level 20 from 130. I'm reading this and seeing, okay, it was 130 at gem level 20 before, so the buff is 9% at gem level 20, but what was it at the base level of 1? Anyway. Orb of Storms. Which, by the way, okay, not anyway. Back to Molten Strike. Molten Strike has always been a fantastic skill. It has always mechanically been a fantastic skill, ever since Delve came out, right? Um, just being able to have life gain on hit for the number of projectiles that you can pop out with Molten Strike and Dying Sun and all the other various mechanics that you can put at your display... Uh, is really, really good. It's never been terrible. And there are several different uniques that simply use things like Grellwood Shanks and other types of uniques that are really, really good. Again, you don't need to go grab mirror tier stuff in order to delve relatively deep using Molten Strike. So, the fact that it just got a buff, like, and it's already been something that, that melee users have been using to delve deep, like, it's good news. It's good news for, for people that like that skill. Orb of Storms now deals 2 to 7 lightning damage at gem level 1, down from 3 to 9, up to 185 to 555 at gem level 20, which is a slight nerf, not much. Now strikes every 1.5 seconds at gem level 1, up to 1.02 seconds at gem level 20 from 1 second at all gem levels. Okay, and that's the reason why people were using Orb of Storms was because of its frequent, frequent hitting rate. Uh, it had such a high frequent hit rate. Whereas now at gem level 20, it will still be slower than what it used to be at gem level 1. So... Rest in peace, Orb of Storms. That, that just got ripped. Pestilent Strike now gains additional melee range as the gem levels up to plus 2 at gem level 20. Okay, interesting. Punishment now causes cursed enemies to have minus 20% to reduced physical damage taken. Okay. I think I'm starting to, to solidify. Those of you who are Patreon supporters, you got a preview already today of the four different builds that I was looking at uh, on the Patreon post. So, yeah. I think between the changes to Impale and the changes to Punishment, I think I know what I'm doing. But maybe not. Maybe not, right? Maybe something else will still surprise me. The duration of the buff granted by cursed enemies when they hit you now matches the base duration of the curse, which is 9 seconds at gem level 1. Okay. Okay. Rain of Arrows now deals 48% of base damage at gem level 1, which is up from 40%, up to 60% at gem level 20, which is up from 50%. So Rain of Arrows got a buff. Good. Rain of Arrows is a strong skill, right? Like, nobody's going to deny that. Well, I'm sure somebody on YouTube will deny it, but anyway, it's a good skill. Okay. 
Uh, next one is Ray Specter. Yeah, this is the one where they they messed with us. Additional Maximum Specters are now unlocked at gem levels 13 and 25 instead of 11 and 21. It. So I was having a discussion <clears throat> on this with somebody on YouTube because yesterday a lot of people thought from the development manifesto and because I was having fun, people thought that I was saying that Ray Specter is, you know, a dead a dead gem now and why would anybody play it? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that now anybody that wants to use Ray Specter in order for them to get their additional specters, they really need to invest into their specters. And people are saying, no, you don't. It's not a, a, a massive investment. You can just use a double convoking wand with plus one to minion gems, and you can use boots uh, that have it. And then you can use your witch ascendancy with plus two to minion gems. See, you don't have to really invest. Like, you just described really investing your character. You just described both your weapon slots, your boot slot, and the ascendancy choice. That That's literally the things that you have to invest in Path of Exile, your item slots and your passive tree choices. Like, wh what else do you mean when you say invest a lot it requires a lot of investment like that's that's what i mean when i'm saying this requires a lot of investment now you really have to plan your build around how many specters you want to include in it um and how you're going to get that number of specters whereas previously 3.8 we really didn't have to think that hard about it because hitting gem level 21 uh really wasn't that difficult to hit you can get that through corruption you can get that through empower you can get that through using any one of those various means that we just uh, uh ran through you didn't have to use them all okay ray zombie let's let's see the big nerf that is coming to my thick uh, baron mancer the zombie slam ability now has a six second cooldown up from four As though it really needed to be nerfed again. Okay. We already don't have Violent Dead, but now we don't even... I mean, that slam basically doesn't exist now, but okay. Has a base radius of 17 units, down from 28. So it's AoE got nerfed. The slam is now slower and has 30% less base damage effectiveness at gem level 1, rising to the previous damage effectiveness around gem level 17. Okay, look! Look! It's going to have the same damage once you hit gem level 17 for the slam the cooldown is still going to be a problem but the damage is going to be fine okay this is fine this is totally fine base zombie damage has been reduced by approximately 25 percent at all gem levels okay yeah that was probably deserved but again they were so far and away so broken in 3.8 that it's fine they're still going to be great they're still going to clear the entire game they're still we're still going to see somebody going in with the uh with with just zombies and crushing the awakener at some point no longer grants zombies more life as the gem levels, but the zombies themselves do gain base life with each gem level, like on other minions. What? Okay, not more life. So, yeah, so they lose. It, it's exactly what the development manifesto said, not what the patch notes describe. The patch notes do not do as good a job describing this if this works the way that development manifesto said so it's they're losing their life multiplier each level like they're still going to have a base amount of life that they're going to gain but they lose their multiplier as they were leveling so for for builds that relied on zombie hp that's a that's a pretty significant hit um if you were going for insane totals of uh, of zombie life now increases zombie slam area of effect as the gem levels as the gem levels up up to 76 percent at gem level 20 okay Okay, that, that's okay. So the slam, which, look, here's the reality of it. Those of us that have been playing zombies for a long time know that when we had Violent Dead, we were using Violent Dead. Now that we no longer had Violent Dead in 3.8, we weren't using it, which means that we weren't reliant on the zombie slam ability anyway to deal damage, to clear packs, to kill bosses. So the fact that they're making it even less reliable, I think that's fine. I think zombies are, are still going to be incredibly strong. You, they haven't touched anything like Feeding Frenzy. Like, okay, I shouldn't say that. They touched Feeding Frenzy a little bit, but Feeding Frenzy, Death Mark, all of the, what, three new minion damage wheels that got added to the passive tree? Zombies are going to be just fine. So are SRS. I haven't seen anything about SRS yet, so they're going to be fine. Scourge Arrow. Uh, now deals 28% of base damage at gem level 1 from 40% up to 35% at gem level 20 from 49%. That's a pretty significant nerf. 
15% at gem level 20 and 12% at gem level 1, that's pretty significant. I guess they said, no, you don't get to play Scourge Hero this league. Now adds 20 to 30 cast damage at gem level 1, up to 113 to 169 at gem level 20. So they added some flat bait, some flat damage. Shattering Steel now has a base attack time multiplier of 85%. Same thing as Lancing Steel. Now deals 48% of base damage at gem level 1 from 45% up to 55% at gem level 20 from 50%. Okay, so yeah. So the steel, steel effects and pale stuff got buffed because monsters are getting more armor and more life and, and all that great stuff. So, eh, not bad. Smoke Mine. The buff granted by Smoke Mine now grants 10% increased movement speed at gem level 1 from 20% up to 29% at gem level 20. Same as previously. So early on, it's a little bit worse. Siege Ballista. All right, this is a new gem. Now requires level 12 at gem level 1 from level 4. Uh, now, or, I'm sorry, this isn't a new gem. This is the old gem, but that's now newly named. There we go. Now deals 100% of base damage at gem level 1 from 140%, up to 145% at gem level 20 from 170%. So nerfed in, in terms of that regard. Now grants plus 2 to your maximum number of summon totems at all gem levels. Cool. Now grants 1% increased projectile damage per 1% gem quality. Previously granted 1% increased totem placement speed. I, I'm actually interested to hear from those of you who play a lot of totems. I've played totems a few times, but I would not describe myself as a totem player, right? I would still describe myself as uh, as either a support main or as a uh, uh, a magic find main or as a, a summoner main. Like, those are the three archetypes, right, that I've played by far away, by far and away more than totems. Nonetheless, interacting with totem players... A lot of totem players that I know have talked a lot about the quality of life of totem placement speed and that there's just not a lot of it that you can pick up. And so any change to that might be something that uh, that at least some some totem boys are, are, are not going to appreciate. Spectre Throw now has an attack time multiplier of 110% from 100. Split Arrow now adds 1 to 2 uh, attack uh, physical damage at... Gem level 1 up to 56. Okay, that's just flat. That's just adding some stuff that's flat on the split arrow. Soul Ren now has a base duration of 0 0.6 seconds at all gem levels, which is up from 0 0.4. Okay. So, Chaos stuff is getting a buff. Chaos spells getting a buff. Stormblast Mind now deals 2 to 7 lightning damage at gem level 1 from 3 to 10, up to 334 to 1002 at gem level 20, from 305 to 915. Oh no, here it is. I just said I didn't see anything about SRS. Why did I have to say something? What did they do to SRS? Summon Raging Spirits will now try to travel to the location your cursor was over at the point they were summoned, unless they find an enemy before they arrive. Oh, okay. Whew. Whew. Okay, take a deep breath. I thought they were going to mess with Summon Raging Spirit for a second. No. What they did was they improved its AI again, which is good. Let's, that, 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 that's good. Let's clap. SRS getting buffs and quality of life stuff. That's good. We, we are all happy. Praise, praise Chris Wilson. SRS is getting, getting quality of life. Tornado Shot. The secondary projectiles now fade over time, similar to Freezing Pulse, but without the gradual damage drop-off. In other words, the secondary projectiles will have a shorter range by default, but can be increased by increasing the skill's projectile speed. Okay. Grimro, if you're watching, you're still going to play Tornado Shot, right? Like, you have to. You're the Tornado Shot guy. Like, the community knows you for spreadsheets and Tornado Shot uh, clearing and doing massive amounts of testing on new leagues. So you're still going to go Tornado Shot, right? And just scale the hell out of projectile speed? Not even, realistically, because the damage that you deal, especially with Herald Device, is just so so ridiculously strong. Do you really need the secondary projectiles? Eh. Toxic Rain. Now deals 7.9% of base chaos damage per second at gem level 1, from 6.7 up to 285 at gem level 20. Alright, that's nice. Vol Burning Arrow. 100% of physical damage is now converted to fire damage, up from 50%. Now has a 50% chance to ignite enemies at all gem levels. Yep, 
Uh, that's the same as Burning Arrow, right? Now deals 150. Yeah, these are all of the same changes as what they did to Burning Arrow. It's just now also attached to Vol Burning Arrow. Vol Spectral Throw, same uh, modifiers as regular Spectral Throw. Venom Gyre now deals 90% of base damage at gem level 1, up from 80%, up to 115% at gem level 20, up from 104. So, hey, Venom Gyre, boys, that's a pretty big buff. Volatile Dead now has a limit of 60 orbs. <laughs> But Vol Volatile Dead is getting the SRS treatment, everybody. Uh, that's funny. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm taking a moment because I'm thinking of all of the times that I've sat as Shaper is talking and I'm just sitting there spamming my, my right-click button, which was my Volatile Dead summon, and then just huge amounts of Volatile Dead bubbling up out of the ground and then just all blowing up the Shaper at the same time. I'm just taking a moment to appreciate Volatile Dead with hundreds of orbs floating around. But now we can only have 60. I wonder if they'll ever go back and evaluate that and be like, you know what? We're going to make it so that way at like gem level 31 you get 65 orbs or something. I, I don't know. Who knows? They, they've nerfed it and now they can change it if they want to. Alright, support gem reworks. Ranged attack totem support. Now called Ballista's totem support. Supported skills now deal 50% less damage at gem level 1, from 30% up to 41% less, uh, less at gem level 20, from 26%. Ooh, interesting. Supported skills now summon a Ballista Totem rather than a regular Totem. Supported skills now have plus 2. Yeah, this is all the same as the, as the previous attack Totem. Okay. Support Gem Balance. Feeding Frenzy Support. So here we go. Here's with all of our support gems that we were worried about. Feeding Frenzy. The Feeding Frenzy buff now grants 10% increased attack, cast, and movement speed to your minions from 15%. That's still fantastic. 10% from a buff that you can constantly proc. That's good. Minions from supported skills now deal 5% more damage while you have Feeding Frenzy buff at gem level 1 from 15% up to 15% at gem level 20 from 24%. Okay, that... Again, it doesn't ruin any builds, but that's significant. That is a significant amount of damage that you lose. Because it's a more multiplier. That's a significant amount of damage that you lose. Fortify support. Fortify is now multiplicative with other sources of damage reduction. Impale support. Now grants supported skills minus 30 to total physical damage reduction against impale hits at all gem levels. And again, that's not really a buff. That's not a nerf. That's just a change because the... Physical damage reduction against impale hits is like a new, it's like a whole new layer of defenses that monsters have just specifically against impale. So, of course, that's got to work well. Not just against impale, but with armor and with all of the new buffs that are coming to, uh, to minions to make the game a little bit more harder and a little bit more difficult. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with anybody who's playing an impale build. Not saying that I'm playing an impale build. Maybe. Maybe. Inspiration support. Supported skills now deal 5% more damage per inspiration charge at gem level 1, save as, same as previously, up to 7% at gem level 20, down from 8%. Supported skills now have 6% increased critical strike chance per inspiration charge at gem level 1, down from 7, up to 8% at gem level 20, down from 10%. So inspir inspiration just straight up got nerfed. Well, that, that does mess with things a little bit. It's not too much, it's just a slight tweak. Lesser multiple projectile support. Supported skills now deal 15% less projectile damage at gem level 1 from 25% up to 6% less at gem level 20 from 16. Okay. Minion damage support. Supported skills now deal 25% more damage at gem level 1 down from 30 up to 49% at gem level 20. No change from that previously. So again, at the top end, minion damage is fine. Now gains 1% increased damage from minions from supported skills per 2% quality. Previously gained 1.5 per 2% quality. Okay, so a little... Again, these are little nerfs that just bring in minions and say, okay, let's make it so that way in 3.9, 40% of the league isn't playing minions, right? I'm fine with this. This is going to be good. Those of us who still enjoy playing minions are still going to be able to play minions. And if you've never played minions, by the way, it's going to be so good you won't be able to tell the difference. You're just going to go, why haven't I played this before? I, I literally showed uh, summoners to a couple of different players in 3.8 that had never played summoners before, and they were like, this is amazing. Why haven't you told us about this earlier? And it's like, well, because they introduced all this new quality of life stuff that you would have been asking for <laughs> if you would have played this three... 
this particular build prior to the 3.8 release. So anyway, I, I still think minions are going to be fine. This is this is all of this is a smoke screen to scare off people who just want to play like the top most dominant most OP most meta build. It's still going to be fantastic. Uh, and it's still going to be very very beginner friendly for clearing the game. Summoner builds are not necessarily beginner friendly for learning all the mechanics. Uh, I liked them as a beginner because it meant that I had to make myself aware to a whole bunch of different mechanics. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say it's beginner friendly in that way. It really forces you to learn a lot about Path of Exile. If you're a new player, playing a summoner is a great way to learn the game. Mirage Archer Support. The Mirage Archer now deals 40% less damage with supported skills at gem level 1 from 30% up to 31% less at gem level 20 from 11%. Its targeting distance has been lowered to 70 units from 105. We went over this yesterday with the development uh, balance manifesto. Uh, and, and this is the same thing that they did to Winter Orb. And so uh, out of respect for Mirror Archer that has served its role well the entirety, uh, the entire life cycle of 3.0 since the introduction, I believe, of Fall of Oriath, uh, let's just take a moment and get some Fs in chat for the Mirage Archer support. It, uh, it had a good run. Onslaught support. Supported skills now have 20% chance from 25% to grant Onslaught for 3 seconds, down from 8 seconds. Wow, that's really low on dealing a killing blow at gem level 1. Up to 39% chance from 44% chance to grant Onslaught for 6.8 seconds, down from 8 seconds, at gem level 20. Now gains 1% increased attack and cast speed per 2% gem quality from 1% increased attack and cast speed per 4% gem quality. Okay. So, this was included again in the development manifesto that they're hitting like early game racers from using this stuff. That really shouldn't affect anybody's end game build. Point blank, point blank support. Supported skills projectile attack hits now deal up to 30% more damage to targets at the start of their movement, down from 50. Volley support. Supported skills now deal 12% less damage. Uh, less projectile damage at gem level 1 from 25%, up to 3% less at gem level 20 from 16%, now has new art. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Passive tree rebalance. The point blank keystone has now causes projectiles to deal 30% more damage to very close enemies, uh, which is down from 50%, dealing uh, up to 30% less damage based on the distance the projectile travels before it hits. Added a new cluster to the southeast uh, of the Ranger, Watchtowers. This cluster provides bonuses to attack totems and allows you to summon an additional Ballista Totem. Alright, that's cool. The Ironwood cluster has moved to south of the Duelist, has been expanded, and now includes two new additional notables. Uh, pan Panopticon and Surveillance? Is that, what, is that how you say that? Panopticon? Let's find out. Panopticon. That's that's what that's what TTS is telling me. The movement speed for minions granted by the Ravenous Horde cluster has been halved. Whoa! Whoa! That that's actually to me that's actually a bigger quality of life nerf than all the damage that they just announced on all the gems. I mean, you you just don't have to get Ravenous Horde. It's just having movement speed on your monsters is really really nice. Uh, because it means that they go from pack to pack a lot faster while you are shield charging or leap slamming or using whatever movement or uh, or running skill phase run uh, that you like to use. It's so nice to have movement speed on your minions as you're playing a summoner. So that's actually a pretty big, pretty big hit. The Graceful Assault Cluster has been moved closer to the Ranger. The Honed Edge Cluster has been moved uh, one passive east one passive to the east. The Ambidextry Blade Barrier Cluster has moved east several passives. Interesting. The Retaliation uh, Testudo Wheel is now where the Ambidextrous Blade Barrier used to be. Okay, so that should make that easier to get to for some builds. The Blood Bludgeon Blitz and Swagger Clusters have both moved one passive to the west. The Lava Lash Notable is uh, now also grants 8% to fire damage over time multiplier. Nice. Added a new cluster to the east of the Shadow. Shocking Strikes. Grants increased lightning damage with attack skills, chance to shock, increased effect of shock, and increased critical strike chance against shocked enemies. <laughs> it's like Elemental Hit was crying out in the darkness, Please, I've been nerfed. Could you just give us a passive, or two, or three, or five? Give us an entire wheel. And thus... 
A benevolent Chris Wilson looked down and didst thus give to the shadow an elemental hit shock form passive wheel. Okay, add in a new cluster between the ranger and the duelist. Burning brutality. Okay, this is the same thing. So the shadow is going to be the lightning guy. The ranger is and duelist are going to be burning brutality. And then flash freeze. Uh, this is now... Okay, it's, it's a buff. Flash Freeze now grants 10% chance to freeze. A small passive leading to it now grants 12% increased cold damage, which is down from 16, and 10% increased effective chill. Previously, it just had the damage. Yeah. Okay. So they really are trying to help out ailment-based builds, this, this particular league. I wonder, I wonder if the amount of people who have been complaining about bow stuff, myself included, by the way, I wonder if it would have been different if they would have pitched this league rather than of being like a bow rework league, if they would have said, hey, we're going to take a look at ailments this league. Maybe they've done a lot more work with the bows than they've done with ailments, but I just wonder if they said, hey, we're reworking ailments and we want to really make them stand out and have their own identity again, and they would have used that more in their promotional material if that would have resulted in, in, in a different reaction from the community. I don't know. Only only uh, you know Rick and Morty in an alternate dimension would be able to answer that question of... of how exactly people reacted to that differently. Added a new stat. Minus X percent to total physical damage reduction from your hits. Yes, this is by far the wordiest new stat they've ever introduced. This stat has been added to the following clusters. Or fitted an aim, blade dancer, splitting strikes, blah, 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 and a whole bunch of them. Yes, okay. So these are ways to get through enemy armor resistance, as it were. Added a new, very similar stat. Enemies you impale have minus total physical damage reduction against impale hits. Yep. Okay, that's great. It's just more stats for for melee and for fully physical builds to deal with. But, all right. Ascendancy Balance. This is, by the way, the first... I want to say this is the first... Is this the first major patch that we haven't had a rework since, what, 3.2? 3.3? Because it was 3.6, 3.4... I think 3.2 was when a whole bunch of a whole bunch of the ascendancies got reworked. Where is my bear with me for a moment where I find my ascendancy uh, my ascendancy document. Bear with me as we look at this. Because we pulled this up. Do 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 do. When was this? I should have a document in one of these drives. Ascendancies? Ascend League Ascendancy? Is that what it was called? No, that's the meta overview. League Starters? Nope, that's not it. Ascendancy. Nope, is that it? Nope. Nope. Did I not name it Ascendancies? What did I name it? League Ascendancy Changes. Here we go. I found it. I found it. Thank you for your patience, YouTube. I have finally found it. Alright. This dates all the way back. This is Blight League. This dates all the way back to Legion. Wait, okay. Legion, Synthesis, Betrayal, Delve, Incursion. Oh, right. And then Blight League, I have held over here, but this is Abyss, this is Harbinger. I want to say, I want to say it was pre-Harbinger even that they were still rotating the meta. Right? So it went 3.8, 3.7, 3.6, 3.5, 3 3.4, 3.3 was Incursion, 3.2 was Bestiary, 3.8 one was Abyss, and then Harbinger came out at the same time as uh, 3.0. No, that can't be right. I, I must be getting this off in terms of our, our timeline. But it has been a long time. That, that I guess that's the summary. The summary statement is, it has been a long-ass time. That is the, this is the cold, calm, calculated G3 iron moment that is completely devoid of emotion, humor, or any kind of uh, 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 reactions whatsoever. 
It has been a long ass time since we have endured a period in which a patch has been released without a major ascendancy overhaul in Path of Exile. This is the first time in stated long ass time that we have had such a phenomenon. Okay, so all that being said, let's get into the ascendancy balances, which means let's see who gets nerfed. Necromancer, mindless aggression now grants your minions 10% increased movement speed down from 30%. Wow, that's a big hit. Commander of Darkness now grants the increased attack and cast speed aura as a single combined aura rather than as a separate aura for each other aura you had. This matters for effects that care for how many buffs you have, such as Mantra of Flames. Okay, that's actually not too bad. This part's bad. Don't get me wrong, this part is bad. Remember, movement speed is like worth way more than damage for minions because you have so many so many dam so many damaging sources by having a bunch of minions that if each one of them doesn't do a million damage on their own it doesn't matter if they do half a, a million damage on your own if you have 16 of them all doing half a million damage that's 8 million dps that's a lot if they're all hitting so the thing that keeps them back or holds them in check or conversely makes them really strong is the amount of speed that they've got to get to their target uh, so hitting hitting movement speed actually hurts the quality of life. Again, it doesn't mean that you can't clear the game. It doesn't mean that you can't kill all these bosses that are going to be in 3.9. It just means it'll be done a little bit slower. Guardian, Unwavering Faith now grants the physical damage reduction and life regeneration aura as a single combined aura rather than a separate aura. Okay, so same thing as what happened with Necromancer. Slayer, Endless Hunger now causes you to be unaffected by bleeding rather than immune. So does that mean that Golden Rule Slayer uh, Flicker Strike is back? Right? Because you can be bleeding. You're not immune to it. Right? I don't know. I'm not a Flicker Strike boy. I've played it once, twice. But I don't think I played it as Slayer either time. Item Balance. Assassins, Sniper, and Recurve Bow Base Types now have 6.7 base critical strike chance, up from 6.5. They now each have an implicit that grants plus 15 to 25 to critical strike multiplier. The steel wood and reflex bow base types now grant 6% increased movement speed up from 4. And the Marikath bow base type now grants 10% increased mo uh, movement speed up from 8. Spine, ivory, and bone uh, base types now have a base attack speed of 1.4 attacks per second up from 1.35 and 6.5% base critical strike chance up from 6 the damage has been lowered to allow for the changes to attack uh, to a, for to allow for the changes to attack speed okay that makes sense that's nice that's nice less raw power but you're attacking and critting more often the ranger bow base type now deals slightly more damage all wand base types now have 20% more base damage hey wanders wanders rejoice Bows and wands can now roll increased attack speed modifiers of one higher tier than previously. Of Acclaim is now the new highest tier. Essence of Zeal has been updated to be consistent with this change. Okay, I'm calling it right now. You guys can timestamp this, cite it, share it on Mathil's stream. Mathil is going to play a wander this league. I'm calling it right now. He's going to play a wander this league. He's going to do it. Added Fire Cold Lightning... Uh, damage for bows no longer use the same modifiers as those found on one-handed weapons. They instead now have their own progression, which is approximately 25% stronger than the one-handed equivalents. Okay, cool. That's nice. I mean, it is a two-handed weapon, right? Like, a bow is a two-handed weapon. You have to use two hands to use it, right? So it shouldn't be based on one-handed rolls. The faster start of energy shield recharge crafted modifiers... The lower tier now grants 8 to 11% from 12 to 17% and costs an orb of alchemy, previously a regal orb. And the higher tier now grants 12 to 15%, which is down from 18 to 24 and costs four orbs of alchemy down from one exalted orb. Okay, so that's a significant nerf, but it's also significantly cheaper. Take it for what you will. You can no longer craft plus one to maximum number of curses on body armors or unveil it from immortal syndicate members. Wow, okay, so all of those people who have that in standard, that's legacy now. You can now no longer craft the veiled added damage of specific ailment elements with an ailment chance on bows. Crafted modifiers which grant elemental or chaos resistance penetration on weapons now grant up to 9 to 10%, which is down from 14 to 16. 
The Of Crafting Crafted Suffix, which previously allowed you to craft any number of additional mods on an item, now allows you to craft up to three mods on the item. This uh, affects existing items? <coughs> I'm confused. This affects existing items. Items with the mod will now be limited to two additional crafts. However, any items with more than the allowed number of crafts will keep those mods. Okay. Any items with more than the allowed number of crafted mods will will keep the Okay, so this affects this does affect existing items, but they're not wiping them. They're not getting rid of them. So those of you that have like these really awesome, well-crafted, expensive items in standard, they're not going to go poof, but uh but don't craft on them again, because it'll be like a divine orb on a legacy item. It's it's going to hit it, and the new rules for crafting will apply to it. The veiled and crafted modifiers with hybrid defenses, armor, energy shield, or evasion, and life have had their values halved, and their tier progression split by item types. The shaper and elder physical damage added as fire, cold, lightning modifiers on amulets now grant 8 to 11%, down from 10 to 15. Ouch. Uh, and 12 to 15, down from 16 to 20, of physical damage added as that ailment. Ouch. Man, more hits to damage across the board. The Shaper and Elder attack speed and double damage modifiers on two-handed weapons now grant 4 to 6% chance to deal double damage, down from 20. Wow! Nobody's going to go for those anymore. I don't care if they're going to be rarer or, or less prevalent just due to shaper and elder not being around as much nobody's gonna go for that now that's actually a bad roll now elemental penetration suffix modifiers can no longer roll prefix versions have been added instead bows can no longer roll the two-handed weapon version of added cold damage per dexterity they can now roll the one-handed weapon version instead ouch I guess you take some, you lose some with the bows, right? This is truly a bow balanced league. It's not that they're getting nerfed. It's not that they're getting buffed. Some things are getting nerfed. Some things are getting buffed as related to bows. Increased maximum mana modifiers on helmets now grant 9 to 11, uh, down from 10 to 15, and 12 to 15, down from 16 to 20, increased maximum mana. The highest tier increased all attribute modifiers on amulets can no longer roll. All right, so tier one, tier one attribute amulets are now legacy in standard, and everybody that's using a stat stacking character is gonna want them. The highest tier elemental penetration modifiers on amulets can no longer roll. <sighs> okay, so with the, with GGG choosing to buff uh, boss elemental resistances and making elemental pen tougher to come by this is an indirect buff to inquisitor right right like the inquisitors already got some of that penetration built in so why not take it there right the lower tier reduced reflected physical and elemental damage taken modifiers on body armors now grants 100 percent reduced reflected damage taken or physical damage taken from 15 to 22 percent this higher roll can no longer roll this higher tier can no longer roll. Reduced reflected physical and elemental damage taken modifiers on rings now grants 31 to 45 from 10 to 15 and 46 to 55 percent from 16 to 20. Reduced reflected physical and elemental damage taken. Non-chaos damage added as extra chaos damage modifiers on amulets now grants 3 to 5 percent which is down from 7 to 13. Wow! And damage across the board is getting hit pretty interesting elemental damage as extra chaos damage modifiers on one-handed weapons will now grant five to six from 10 to 15 and seven to eight percent from 16 to 20 staves and war staves can now roll a two-handed version of this modifier at values of 10 or 12 to uh, and 13 to 15 percent that's down as well like Damage across the board is down. Monster HP is up. Ray class is going to be a harsh and unforgiving place. It's going to be tougher. This is going to be a tougher league. Like a lot of people are going to be like, huh, I tried this build last league and it got me through X, Y, or Z content and now it's not getting me through the same content. 
It's going to be very, very interesting. Can you be a deer in a moment and actually get me some water when you go back down? I am amazed that YouTube has not uh, has not rioted against me because my voice sounds like crap. All right, you can no longer roll chance to maim and maim support modifiers on two-handed maces. Oh. Okay, so maim maces are dead. They're legacy. Hey, Red, if you're watching this, your legacy, baby. Congrats. You already knew that, though. You already knew you were legacy. You already predicted half of this stuff. Hybrid physical damage and support spell damage and support modifiers can no longer roll on two-handed weapons. Added physical and chaos damage to spells on weapons now grant 32 to 44 to 66 to 76 added damage to spells. Two-handed versions now grant 60 to 73 to 108 to 122, which is, which is up. So if I play a physical or chaos based spell, hmm, <laughs> fossil crafting. The supported by main modifier from serrated fossils can no longer roll on body armors. The damage is taken from mana before life from Lucent Fossils is now a prefix to be consistent with the Shaper version of this modifier. Existing versions will remain suffixes. That's cool. The added maximum life and increased life modifier from Pristine Rossels can no longer roll. Okay. It's a good thing I'm playing softcore this league because I'm going to die a whole bunch. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to die so much. Elemental penetration modifiers from fossils now grant 5 to 7 percent. Two-handed weapon versions now grant 12 to 15. Prismatic fossils modifiers for weapon elemental penetration now grant 9 to 12 percent. That's also down. All right, other item changes. All right, the metal addles modifier, which by the way, this is a play on the addle addle. The addle addle was a uh, a primitive throwing device. Um, it actually predates the bow, predates the sling, uh, but was kind of like a sling. It was like a piece of, uh, of a stick that you would then put a spear into and then launch it. Uh, but kind of like a kind of like a slingshot before the slingshot. Anyway, ten years of working at a museum will teach you lots of random history. Okay. Existing versions can be updated with a Divine Orb if you want uh, to be hit more often for some reason. <laughs> That's funny. Spell damage modifiers for one-handed weapons can now reach up to 109% increased spell damage, up from 79%. Yeah, these are just buffs to spells. Spell damage modifiers for two-handed weapons can now reach up to 164% increased spell damage, from 115%. Spell damage modifiers granted by Essence of Woe have been updated to be consistent with the above changes. Okay. The increased fire, cold, lightning damage prefixes have also been raised to match the above spell damage modifier changes. Okay. Cartographer seal and unshaping orbs can no longer be obtained via their recipe as they are no longer being used. They can now be sold to a vendor to recoup the original recipe components. Cool. Apprentice Cartographer sextant, Sextants are now called Simple Sextants, Journeyman's Cartographer Sextants have been renamed Prime Sextants, and Master's Cartographer Sextants have been renamed Awaken Sextants. They each have new art. Oh, good. Are you woke? <laughs> Grinding Gear Games is asking the gaming community in 2020, are you a woke gamer? Hmm. YouTube, can we get a shout out and a round of applause for Mrs. Draconis bringing me water? It's it's so, it's so good. Mm. While carrying up my near two year old, Mrs. Draconis, the real hero of G three. Sextants are no longer used on maps, on your atlas. They are now used on watchstones. Yep, we knew that. The rewards from Legion and Blight encounters have been tweaked. Okay. Tweaked. <sighs> Those of you who are wondering, 
Iron, why are you sighing? Because we've had a couple of things like map drops getting tweaked in the past, and then GGG has had to come out two weeks later and say, hey, this tweak was actually a bug, and we're so sorry, but we actually messed with the drop rates of some stuff, and we're sorry that the first two weeks of the league had reduced drops of X, Y, or Z. So this makes me a little nervous. Especially on Blight stuff. Like if you're going with an early strategy in the league to go get Blight stuff and Blight maps and get your oils anointed onto an amulet. I don't know. It makes me nervous. Like what happens if they just don't drop Blighted maps, right? Which was a thing, by the way, in Blight League. I know they're guaranteed to drop oils or Blighted maps now, but... Anyway, I guess you, you, can't, you can't play the paranoid game of what bugs are going to come, right? There are going to be bugs. There's always bugs every release. But that just makes me nervous around Legion and Blight because are, those are two newer mechanics that people are going to plan their builds around. The number of gems rewarded by the Labyrinth chests have been reduced. <coughs> okay. Modifiers exclusive to the Convoking Wand base type have had their relatives' weightings adjusted. Yeah, it's going to be harder to get the uh, plus one to all minion skills now plus one to level of all minion skills. That's going to be tougher to roll. <coughs> Skill-specific labyrinth enchantments that increase a skill's area of effect have had their values increased to 16% from Merciless Lab and 24% from the Eternal Labyrinth in most every case. This does not affect existing enchantments. The Blast Rain additional Blast Labyrinth enchantment can no longer be acquired from the Merc Lab. The Eternal Labyrinth enchantment now grants 100% chance for the additional Blast, up from 75%. Existing items are not affected. Blast Rain is going to be fun this league. Blast Rain and Burning Arrow. Explosive Arrow, too. The Labyrinth Enchantments, which previously granted additional knockback chance for sweep, instead now grant a chance to gain an endurance charge on kill with sweep. This affects existing items. When they make changes like this, I just wonder who it who it is that's taking the time to say, you know, you know what Sweep really needs? Sweep really needs a lab enchant helm helm enchant that has endurance charges. I I I'm not making fun of it. I'm not trying to attack the design idea. I'm legitimately asking from a design perspective, what's the goal with this, right? Because a lot of the times the goal with something like this is to test it. Right to test something out, see if it works, and then later on you implement it on a wider scale, whatever it was that you were testing. So these sorts of seemingly random things make me make me wonder about those sorts of possible wide sweeping changes. Sweet, wow, that was I did not mean that as a pun, but what sort of wide sweeping changes might be coming in the future? Did not mean that as a pun. That just it just came out that way. I'm sorry. Labyrinth enchantments, which previously granted increased duration for Ice Shot's chilled ground, instead now grant increased damage with Ice Shot. This affects existing items. The lab enchantments, which grant increased area of effect for Shrapnel Shot, now give Galvanic Arrow, can no longer be obtained. Existing items with these enchantments are unaffected. Okay, so those are, those are technically legacy. So keep them as collector's items and sell them to somebody on standard. Shaper and Elder Scarabs have been reworked. They now add Shaper Elder Influence outcomes to the map area, granting 30, not 60, 90% more chance to find Elder Shaper rares in that area. The Price of Protection Divination card has been temporarily disabled from dropping because Tier 16 Elder Chateau maps are no longer a thing. You can still turn in existing sets for a map from the previous series. Remove the Sextant Upgrading Recipe. Oh, that's a bummer. Reach of the Council is not changing in this update. We have some cool plans for this item, but could not get them ready in time. We're very sorry, Reach of the Council fans. So, an iconic bow in Path of Exile isn't getting changes during the Bow League. Bow League. Okay. Volley Fire 1 is now limited to 1. 
and now causes you to fire six additional projectiles on the first and last volley up from two. Existing items can be updated to this new value with the Divine Orb, however all versions are affected by the new limit. Asenath's Chant now triggers a socketed spell when you attack with a bow, previously had a 25% chance. It now has a 0.3 second cooldown on this effect, previously 0.25. Existing items are affected by this change, although the displayed values may say otherwise. Okay, that's cool. Ember Wake now causes ignited enemies to burn 50 to 65% slower. From 65% slower, so we've added some variation there. Hiri's Ire now has 100 to 145 minimum added cold damage to bow attacks, down from 173 to 188, and 160 to 200 maximum added cold damage to bow attacks, down from 240 to 262. Wow! Bye, Hiri's Ire. <laughs> no longer going to be top of the meta. Quill Rain now uh, grants 30% less damage, uh, down from 40% less damage. <coughs> Zoff's Nurture, no longer has Ignites you inflict spread to other enemies within a radius of 15. Now has supported by level 20 Ignite Proliferation. Okay, interesting. The Unshattered Will's damage reduction from the Harbinger of Focus's effect is now multiplicative with similar effects. Snake Bite now also grants 5% to damage over time multiplier for poison per frenzy charge. Existing items are unaffected and cannot get this mod. Nagahamu's Flame Molten Burst skill now deals 15% more damage? This affects all versions of the item? Hey! Hey, guys! Hey, guys! If you want to play Cyclone, go play Nagahamu's Flame Molten Burst Cyclone. Like, 15% more damage buff? Okay. Hollowed Ground no longer overrides the level of monsters within it. It now adds or subtracts a number of levels from the monsters within it based on the mod. <clears throat> this is due to the capacity for it now to now have a variable tier. Existing versions of this item are not affected. Pitch Darkness no longer drops and cannot be obtained outside of trading with other players. Sudden Ignition no longer drops and cannot be obtained outside of trading with other players. It now prevents Burning Arrow from applying its additional burning debuff. This change affects all versions of the item. Aw, oh, bummer. Sybil's Lament now reduces reflected elemental damage taken by 80%, while in the left ring slot, up from 40%, and reduces reflected physical damage taken by 80%, while in the right ring slot, up from 40%. Existing versions of this item can be updated by using a Divine Orb. That's cool. Uriel's Fosterings, Uriel's Fosterings minions are now immune to damage and cannot be targeted by enemies. Okay. There have been some broken ways that people have made spiders from Arakali's fangs derp out like endgame bosses before because they couldn't be targeted. That's interesting. Voltaxic Rift now also allows you to shock enemies as if dealing 300% more damage and allows shocks you inflict to increase damage taken by enemies up to a maximum of 100% as opposed to the normal shock cap of 50%. Wow. Okay. World changes. Two new areas connected to the epilogue town have been added. They can be accessed by processing through Kyriak's quest. That's pretty cool. Like, new endgame quest stuff? Helena now has something to say about the Order of the Jinn. Okay. Like... I know there's not that many people out there that, that enjoy lore and Path of Exile, but hey, there's lore and Path of Exile, and that's pretty cool. Monster changes. All right, here we go. Ray class is a harsh and unforgiving place. Boss encounters throughout the entire campaign have been made more difficult. In most cases, they have been significantly more life, will deal more damage, and use some skills and attacks more frequently. This is particularly true for act bosses. Several bosses also have new skills. Many bosses with lengthy introductions, such as the Brine King, now take reduced damage for a short period immediately after becoming targetable. Do you guys see that? 
So you realize what this means, right? This is GGG just straight up spitting in the face of racers. This is GGG looking at racers and saying, you know, we know that since Brian King takes a while to load, you like throw down a bunch of mines or throw down a bunch of traps or, you know, summon a whole bunch of, let's say, I don't know, Vols or Dead or at summon Raging Spirits. So that way when he becomes targetable, you just instantly phase him. No, no, no. We're going to give him like a massive amount of temporary reduced damage taken as soon as he pops out. So all of those traps that you just laid, all of those Volatile Dead that you just summoned, all of those minions that you had ready to deal damage to him, they don't do damage to him. He's definitely going to get his moves off. Brine King is going to hurt. He's going to kill some people, probably even in the race. If that boss is bugged, that boss is just going to prevent people from progressing. <laughs> if you get a bugged instance of that boss, oh boy. Monsters throughout the game now have more armor from 33% at level 1 up to 2,762 at level 84. Sounds a lot scarier than it is because their base armor is stirringly unimpressive. Okay. Monster resistances throughout the game have been reviewed and made more consistent. In many cases, this has resulted in more resistances on monsters. The wave skill used by some Sea Witch monsters, such as Mervale's Daughter, is no longer considered a projectile and will deal damage in a way that it more accurately reflects its visuals. Okay, cool. Betrayal changes. The Mastermind will now drop Scarabs when slain. Oh, more reasons to farm Mastermind. Cool. Safe House outcomes that reward Scarabs now have a chance to reward additional additional scarabs like yo dog we heard you like scarabs so we decided the things that give you scarabs ought to give you more scarabs how does that sound sounds good thank you chris can i please have some more sir the atlas has been completely reworked there is a new storyline new boss encounters uh, and new ways to customize your atlas. The Elder Shaper and Combined Elder and Shaper encounters can still be accessed. If you're lucky, Zana may offer a Shaper or Eldian, Elder Guardians map. Elder Guardians are no longer in a separate instance to that map. Like the bosses throughout the campaign, most map bosses have had their life significantly increased and the damage and speed of several skills increased. Many bosses are now more resistant to elemental and chaos damage. When encountering Zana in a map, the number of map options she offers is now tied to the level of the area. Interesting. Zana's level, which determines which map device options you have available, as well as what maps Zana can stock in her vendor window, is now determined by the number of maps you have completed on your atlas. Okay. Zana's level is determined by atlas progression now. Interesting. Maps now have a 10% chance to contain a Vol side area where you can find Sacrifice Fragments and Vol Gems. Cool. The Cortex map is now more commonly available from Zana relative to other Synthesis maps and is now always level I-83. Previously, it had a variable level. All Synthesis maps now require a minimum level 80 area to appear in Zana's mission window. Okay, so... At least one of the metas that we already can see shaping up is everybody's going to rush as quickly as they can to get Zana to the required level, so that way she's always giving you level 80 options at least. All five synthesis maps can now drop as if unique items. They can only be acquired from map bosses of tier 11 or greater maps or tier 14 or greater for Cortex. Or if you're very, very lucky, maybe Zana will sell you one. Zana League Mod Map uh, League Mod crafts available during 3.9 fortune favors the brave which gives you one of these randomly essences which costs two chaos uh anarchy which contain which costs two chaos domination which costs three chaos bloodlines which costs three chaos nemesis which means chance orbs will be higher price because people will try to chance headhunters hey Chat and guildies, be aware. Chance orbs are worth something and worth something to trade this league and might be worth something to pick up early league to trade because people are going to want to go into Nemesis maps and chance headhunters. So be aware of that. You can uh, chance headhunters this league. You can do it. So be aware. Beyonders will cost five chaos and then Legion will be the highest and will cost six. UI improvements. The world panel map now supports curved lines. 
Cool. Resonator stack sizes are no longer obscured by the resonator sockets in the Delve Stash tab. Cool. Added slots in the Fragment Stash tab for the Elder and Uber Elder Fragments. Oh, that's cool. Did we get, uh, did we get slots for oils, or are those just going to be thrown randomly? Quest Rewards. Zana no longer awards maps as you complete the Atlas quest line. Instead, she awards free uses of her special map device, League Modifiers, for the first time they are unlocked. Okay, that's fair. Added Shrapnel Ballista as a quest reward for the Ranger for completing Breaking Some Eggs in Act 1. It's relatively early. Added Aero Nova support as a quest reward for the Ranger after completing the Cage Brute in Act 1. Added Ensnaring Arrow as a quest reward for the Ranger for completing Intruders in Black in Act 2 and as purchasable from Yina for the Duelist, Shadow, and Scion. Okay, the Duelist can get Ensnaring Arrow. So if you're going to play a Duelist build that is going to focus on Puncture and Bleeding and you also want the Ensnaring Arrow in order to scale up enemies as moving... Hmm... Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I wasn't I wasn't saying anything about builds I was going to play. Okay. Uh, added Artillery Ballista as a quest reward for the Ranger for completing Sever the Right Hand in Act 3. Added Barrage Support as a quest reward for the Ranger for completing the Eternal Nightmare in Act 4. Added Greater Volley Support as a quest reward for the Ranger, Duelist, and Shadow, and Scion for completing the Eternal Nightmare in Act 4. PvP changes. PvP only characters can no longer appear on League Ladders. Barrage support now applies a 20% damage penalty against players to skills it supports. Anything here to the Hall of Grandmasters? No? Okay. Then, sorry, I don't care. Alright, here's a list of the bug fixes. I am not going to read all of these out. But what I will say is, here's the last line from Natalia. We really hope you enjoy Path of Exile Conquerors of the Atlas. Thank you for your support. Is this their uh, support page, by the way? Does this redirect us to the... Uh, yes, it does. To the Metamorph Supporter Packs. There you go. There's the Sanctum Supporter for 30 US bucks. The Grand Sanctum Supporter for 60 US bucks. The Damnation Supporter for 30 US bucks. And the Eternal Damnation Supporter for 60 US bucks. Okay, so that is the patch notes. Um, I gotta say this, okay? I just gotta say this <coughs> right off the bat. Where is it? Ark. Ark can now chain to another enemy 35 units away. 35 units. That's a lot. It's not as much as what it used to be. Um, Ark POE. I want to say it was like 40 or 50. Take me to the end, to the page end. There we go. Why aren't you showing me your change log history wiki page? Come on, man. Here we go. Here's the change log history. Okay, in 3.6. Lowered the range at which ARC can chain from 50 to 25 units. Yeah, that got halved in 3.6, which is almost a year ago. So that's that's when ARC got smacked. And now it's getting a little bit of a buff going up from 25 to 35. So that's something. That's something. Um, Luis, uh, Fortify was nerfed exactly like they said in the manifesto. Uh, they used like word for word. Same explanation for Fortify. So here's how they put the uh, Fortify. Uh, Fortify is now multiplicative with other sources of damage reduction, but they also said it somewhere else. Yeah, Fortify's damage reduction uh, in effect is now multiplicative with other similar effects. So it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a change. Um, in terms of minions, this has probably been the number one question that I've gotten over the last 40 hours: is hey, how do patch notes affect um, my summoner? I think you can still play a summoner with with some pretty dang good confidence in its clear abilities. Uh, its DPS is still going to be up there towards the top end of the game in terms of clearing everything just fine. You're going to be able to play safely. Of course, that's the entire playstyle behind playing a summoner is that you get to play safely uh, while your minions deal the damage. 
the biggest things that are getting hit right now for the quality of life for summoners are that you're you're really going to be pigeonholed into playing Necromancer if you're going to use Spectres at all, because in order to get the number of Spectres out that really make them worth it, you need to get it up to le gem level 25 now. So you're really going to want to use Convoking Wands and or Unnatural Strength and Empower uh, on your Spectres. Um, but other than that, their, their movement speed is getting nerfed a bit uh, from the passive tree as well as from some of the gems that support them. Uh, but I do think that, that minions are still going to be very, very strong. Okay, so from here on out, those are the patch notes. So we all can theorycraft. In between now until Friday, we can theorycraft all of our builds. I will, of course, have videos coming out. Uh, probably, probably not in 12 hours from now. Probably not even in 10 hours from now. Uh, but probably the following day. Probably Thursday a.m. U.S. Uh, US time. There will be uh, some more build guides that will come out. Uh, previewing some of the builds that I think are going to be strong. Uh, and that you might want to try out during 3.9 League. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to drop a comment on the video with what you plan to play during 3.9 Metamorph League. And uh, is this actually showing properly? Yeah, it is. There you go. There's the Metamorph League. I hope that 3.9 Metamorph League is the league where a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And uh, I'm going to go give, give my voice a rest. I think I'm going to go drink some tea and uh, drink some more of this wonderful water that Mrs. Draconis uh, brought up for me. So have a great night, everybody. Keep reading the patch notes and start dropping comments with what your build is going to be for 